Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to present you the location of all the fuses you release from this Audi A6 from C5 generation and how to do a couple of tests and use them in your favor when you do diagnose your car. So on this car, you're going to find fuse boxes on three main spots. First one is down here, so you got to take out this cover. So on this fuse box, you're going to actually find the computer of the car together with some fuses. And the fifth one is very wisely installed back here and it's basically impossible to reach with any regular socket. So down here guys on this fuse box, depending on your engine, if you have a diesel or gasoline or a V6 or a more performant engine, you will find the engine coolant heater relay, that's for a diesel engine, this one is a gasoline. Then you're gonna find the secondary air injection system. This car doesn't have that and the engine control relay which is gonna be down here and the second one is again for the engine management. Now if you go inside the cabin you're gonna find a couple of more fuses under this plastic cover. On the back of the cover you're gonna find a list with the name of the fuses and the numbers however they are written in German so I'm going to present them for you and we're going to start from fuse number one which is for the heated windscreen washer jets fuse number two for indicators fuse number three for headlamp washer automatic transmission and instrument panel fuse number four is for the license plate lamps fuse number five has a list of components here including instrument panel heated seats electronic door mirrors SRS outside air temperature gauge bulb failure warning module navigation system parking guide air conditioning catalytic converter rear sun blind auxiliary heater cruise control solar roof headlamp switch and glow plug warning lamp so depending of the options you have on your car this fuse is responsible for those number six is for central locking number seven is for anti-lock brake system number eight is missing We've got number nine for heated door mirrors Number 10 is for automatic headlamp adjustments. Number 11 is for the cruise control. Number 12 is for data link connector. Number 13 is for stop lamps. Number 14 is for interior lamps, reading lamps and vanity mirror lamp, electric seat memory. Number 15 is for instrument panel and automatic transmission, air conditioning and navigation system. Again, fuse number 16 is for electronic stability control. 18 headlamp and high beam, 19 headlamp high beam again, fuse number 20 is for the headlamp low beam and 21 again for headlamp low beam, you gotta be right and left, 22 is for the headlamp low beam and headlamp adjustment and fuse number 23 is for the side tail lamps, basically the lights around the car, not the front and the back. Now let's start with bigger fuses, fuse number 24 is for the windscreen wash wiper system. 25 is for the AC heater blower motor and air conditioning system, auxiliary heater and solar roof. 26 is for the heated rear window. 28 is for the fuel pump. 29 is for the engine management, basically the computer of the car. And number 30 is for the sunroof, if you have one. 31, reversing lamps, cruise control and automatic transmission. 32 for the computer of the car. 33 is for the cigarette lighter. 34 is for the computer of the car again, 35 is the trailer socket, basically if you want to hook a trailer, you've got that socket which has a fuse, 36 for the front fog lamps and rear fog lamps, 37 for the telephone and audio system, 38 for the tailgate lamp and central locking, 39 is for the hazard warning lamps, fuse number 40 for the horn, 41 is for the ABS, 42 for the ACP electronic stability program, 43 audio system and 44 is for the heated seats and auxiliary heater. And these two are just reserve ones in case you need it, just replace it with this. But make sure that if for example in this situation a fuse with 15 amps will blow and you replace it with a 31, then make sure that as soon as possible you put a 15 amps fuse otherwise 
this fuse is useless because it's not going to protect the circuit. A short explanation, a fuse is basically like a bridge. It will allow a certain amount of current to pass through before it breaks. So if for example a bridge will hold 10 people at one time, then if you put 11 people the bridge will break. The same with the fuse. If the fuse allows 30 amps, then if you put 31 amps the fuse will break and that's how you protect the circuit. That's how you protect those extra people who wants to go on the bridge and in that way you can save lives. In our situation you save the circuits, you save the wires by installing these fuses. Now we are done with this fuse box and next in order to get to the relays we gotta remove this panel. So if you look down here you've got the 8mm bolt. And then you've got one more down there. Now if you look down here you've got one more 8mm in the corner here. And another one in this corner down here. Next, around the steering wheel, you've got this plastic cover which you gotta pry it out. So, careful to not break the interior. Just take it out like that. Just do that from both sides. Alright. Here it comes. And now, once these all six bolts are out, this cover should come out as well. You might as well disconnect the OBD2 port and remove the cover out of the way if you want to work over here. Right, so as you can see, we've got the relays down here and you're gonna see a couple of more relays if you look back there, between the wires in the corner there. So the first one down here is for the horn, this one is for the ignition switch, basically a part of the PCM, the computer of the car. If your car is equipped with a hydraulic pump relay, then you're gonna find it here. And this one is for the fuel pump, also if you have a diesel engine, this will be responsible for the glow plugs as well. So very important relay down here. This one is basically two relays for the windshield wiper, one is for the turn on and off and one is for the speed. Up here we've got the starter motor and this one is for the AC compressor clutch relay. Very important relays up here. And down there, behind these wiring harnesses, the grey relay is for the engine coolant blower motor. And this one is for the ABS system. And then on the side here we've got an old school fuse which is responsible for the electric seat. And then if you look behind these wires, you've got the fuse number 7 with auxiliary equipment. I'm not sure what's that. And then fuse number 8 is for the engine coolant blower motor, this 5 amps fuse. And then we go to the ABS fuse and the engine coolant blower motor. Alright, so we are done with the presentation of the location of all the fuses and relays on this car. Next I'm going to take as example the fuel pump relay and the fuel pump fuse which is this one right here. You can notice that if you have a diesel engine, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated here because this one is gonna be for the glow plugs as well. Fortunately, this car is a gasoline engine, so this relay is responsible only for the fuel pump. All right, so if I'm gonna take this jumper cable and if you look on the diagram, you can see that pin, you can see that pin number 30 and pin number 87 is gonna be for the fuel pump. There it is, pin 87 and pin number 30 on top. Basically the most thicker one. Basically the most thicker pins. So if I connect this improvised jumper cable, I've got basically two hooks and I'm going to jump and I'm going to pretend that the relay is open right now. It's activated by the ignition switch relay and I can hear the pump running. Now if you take your voltmeter and turn it to 10 amps, reverse these terminals, now you've got basically a jumper cable with a gauge which is going to read you how much current is going to pass through these two terminals. So if I connect here my terminals on those two pins from the relay, I should be able to activate the pump and see how much amperage is using, how much current the pump needs to function. 
so let's see it should be around 5 amps or 6 amps by the way and here it is guys you've got 6 amps of current which is perfect is within spec if for example you see 3 amps then you've got a problem you either have a wire problem along the line or even these relays can have the pins corroded and therefore will not allow the current to pass through them or it might be simply a bad pump so you gotta do further tests guys if you have a problem like this you gotta go from test to test until you find out more data about your car you cannot guess around there is there is absolutely no one on this planet which can guess with 100 percent certainty that a car have for example a bad fuel pump without doing a proper test so i hope that's very clear i think most of the people will think that all the fuses down here are connected directly to the part but if the part has a relay then that current that electricity has to pass through the relay so in most of the cases especially if it's an important part inspecting the fuse is not enough you got to check out the relays as well if the part is not working obviously so right now knowing that all the fuses are basically on the positive side of the circuit once i remove the fuse one of the pins down here should have direct continuity to the positive car battery if i switch the terminal of the voltmeter on the positive side of the car battery and i turn the voltmeter to amps mode down here and turn it to amps 10 amps right there and if i take the and if i take the second terminal of the voltmeter and connect it right here i'm going to activate the pump like that and that is letting us know of the circuit of this system you've got first the relay and then the current is going to pass through the fuse and then to the part to the fuel pump not the other way around all right so that was the presentation thanks for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comments below also check out the other videos i made about this audi a6 also if you are new to this channel and you want to see more car repair videos hit that subscribe button as well check out the other videos i made about other cars i've got more detailed and in-depth videos about diagnosis and troubleshooting different issues on a car and until next time take care so i can see you soon